what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. All right, welcome. John Corcoran here. I am the host of this episode, along with my business partner and co-host, Dr. Jeremy Weiss. How are you doing, Jeremy? I'm excited. Let's rock All it. Right. All right, so we're going to push this out. This is a live episode we're doing here today. We're going to push this out on a couple of different uh, podcast feeds, so you'll be able to listen to it after the fact. Um, and of course, I'm the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast, and you can check out some of my past interviews. I interview smart CEOs, founders, and entrepreneurs and companies and organizations like Netflix, Kinko's, YPO, EO, Activation, Blizzard, Landing Tree, Open Table, and many more. And Jeremy, tell us about Inspired Insider. Yeah, check out Inspired Insider interviews. I, you know, have had uh, the co-founders of Pixar, Atari, P90X, Ron Paul Peel, Einstein Bagels, and many more. So check them out. Heard of a few of those. That's pretty cool. And we are also the co-founders of Rise25, where we help connect B2B business owners to their ideal prospects through podcasting and content marketing. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about how to be a gold medalist at B2B podcasting. Okay. So this will be helpful if you are a B2B business and you are thinking about what are the things that I need to do to be the best, to be the Usain Bolt, to be the Michael Phelps of the world. I don't want to be someone who completely misses the metal stand at the end of the competition. So we're going to talk about some strategies for how you can be really good at doing a podcast. If you're going to do a B2B podcast, we're not going to have a B2C podcast. We're not talking about comedy podcasts. Those things are great. We're not talking about true crime, all the other stuff out there. Those are, those are great, but we're not talking about that. All right. So um, let's dive into it. Of course, this episode, before we get into that, is brought to you by Rise25, where we help B2B businesses get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with done for you podcasts and content marketing. And if you're listening to this, and you've ever thought, hey, I'd, I'd love to know more about starting a podcast. We would say one of the best things we've ever done. We've both been in the field for 12, 14 years or so, um, combined 25 or so years in this field. And I love it. Get to meet amazing people all the time and you would love it as well. So go to rise25.com. You can learn all about what's involved with doing a B2B podcast. and. Um, so we're gonna be talking about how to be successful and to be really a gold medalist. And let's start, Jeremy, uh, by talking about what we're talking about here. So, you know, in the Olympics, you've got one chance. You may never be back. It happens every four years. And it's a great analogy because you're highly specialized and you have specific coaches that come in and help you in different areas. And that's one of the things that we do is, is help people with B2B podcasting. but at the end of the day, you're either going to be on the medal stand, you're going to have a gold medal, maybe if you're lucky, you have a gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal, or you're going to get nothing. You're going to walk away with nothing. And unfortunately, you know, having done a podcast for so many years now, we see a lot of companies that start podcasts, they do it for six months, maybe 12 months, and then they either put it on hiatus and never get back to it, or they quit it entirely. And a lot of times they end up in, in frustration. And so what we're really passionate about is helping other companies to make sure that they're successful. And so um, there's a lot of different things that we see people do that lead to a great amount of success. And we see a lot of things that people fixate, focus their time, energy, and attention on that ends up leading to failure or disappointment. And that's really what we try and do is help to help people to avoid to, to land on that. So, so Jeremy, um, turning it over to you, uh, you know, we want to make sure we don't sound self-serving here, but that this is something that's going to be valuable to people. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, when we talk about you know, kind of the analogy, right? Um, what we tell people is to focus on relationship building, right? How do you give to your relationships? And, you know, your relationships within a certain industry is best. Like you don't want to have necessarily your aunt on or your cousin on, we're talking about B2B businesses here. So you want people in your industry. So it starts with, you know, we talk to people about who are the people in your universe and world, and we're, you were talking about the business world, 
that you really want to give to connect to, you know, allow them to talk about their thought leadership. And um, again, it goes without saying it's going to be great content because it's going to be about that specific industry, but focus on who are the people and companies you really want to give to. Okay. And, and, and ultimately, that's how you become a gold medalist is you first have thought through, OK, who am I going to focus on here? And I talked to someone the other day who said, yeah, you know, we've been doing a podcast for three years now. And I look back on the first year's worth of content and we really didn't focus on the right people. Um, and and frankly, I mean, what I was surprised about in that conversation is that they would continue doing it three years later without having gotten a lot of results from it. Because a lot of people, they'll do it for six months or so, but after that point, they end up giving up. And so you have a really finite window of time to, to get some success from it, to get some actual results from it, or else oftentimes we see people give up. And that's, it's just, it's just sad to see that sort of thing happen. So, you know, first and foremost, if you want to be a gold medalist, you got to view this as a relationship building tool. It's a networking tool. It's a tool for up-leveling your network. It's a tool for connecting and deepening relationships with people that are going to be valuable for you and for your business. And you got to recognize that that's really some of the true value behind it. Uh, so talk a little bit about how, how that works, Jeremy. Yeah, I mean, so it reminds me of, you know, as you know, I'm a huge fan of John Wooden and he has the quote, uh, I think it was attributed to him, never mistake activity for achievement. And so just because you're putting stuff out and it doesn't, you know, just because you have that activity, it doesn't mean you are going to achieve uh, what your goals are. Um, and, you know, so actually I was talking to someone and someone was, you know, didn't know us and they were saying, you know, Jeremy, what, what separates you? And they, they sent me actually some communication with someone giving some podcasting advice. And this person had done a podcast for a while. And within five seconds, I was like, uh, I know exactly, you know, why I, I don't agree with this advice uh, at all. And, and we are, have a little bit different opinion on certain things from other people sometimes. But this person in three different sentences was giving them podcasting advice because they podcasted for maybe, I don't know, two years, which is a long time to, to some people and not to others. But they talked about different numbers. Like when they're talking about metrics, they're talking about Download downloads, numbers, subscribers. Yeah. and And I said, okay, you are an e-commerce business. Okay. You help e-commerce businesses. Let's say you get a million downloads. Does what that does help your mean? business? Are there right. are they all they're probably not all, you know, needing what you have. Now, if you right. have a has a mass market product, but this person serves is a B2B business, they help e-commerce businesses. So getting a million downloads or subscribers or getting in front of a hundred thousand Instagram fans right. is not gonna matter. That yeah. just doesn't matter. Now you want to be in the close circle of people that care about that stuff and are in that particular industry. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it goes back to what I say to people all the time. You have to know what your underlying objectives are in your business. What are your goals in your business? That's what you want to really focus on because it, when you accomplish those goals faster because of the podcast, then the podcast has been successful. And if it takes 100 downloads to do that or 100,000 downloads, who cares how many downloads it takes? It doesn't matter. In addition to the fact that you know people lie about these things all the time, sad to say, but because the numbers are a big black box, they're not publicly known, 50 to 70% of all the downloads come through Apple and Apple doesn't release download numbers, that you know it's sad to say, but we see people all the time who post like, I have a top 100 podcast. Well, what does that mean? I'm looking at the top 100 charts right now. I don't see your podcast on there. On what, by what metric are, are you counting that? Like maybe once seven years ago, it was on the top 100, yeah. you know, or you're just making it up out of thin air, you know? So yeah. it, unfortunately that does happen a lot. What are some other gold medal winning qualities that we see in really successful B2B podcasts? Yeah. I, I mean, I think you hit on one, um, which is know what your goal is. Okay. Someone the other day called me and said, Jeremy, um, I know that you guys, you know, help people launch and start podcasts. I have this person and I think he should really start a podcast. And uh, he's just going to start his business. And can you talk to him? 
And I said, it was a little confusing. He's like, he may be getting a job, a, com a job with a company, or he may be uh, starting his business. And I was like, okay, well, those are two totally separate things. And I have a totally different strategy and advice for him on his podcast if he's thinking of getting a job. Because I'd be like, okay, cool. Like he wants to get a job, let's say in whatever, the security industry, I would tell him to, you know, really connect with people in the security industry, maybe HR people in the security industry and um, really network and add value to those people. And then if it was to start his business, you know, what's, what's the service? And I, and I said, before he should even start a podcast, I, you know, I said, I don't even think he should start a podcast till he has his main goal written out and know what that is. And yeah. if he's starting a business, what's the service he's providing? And then that will depend on who he goes after. So anyways, after that short conversation, he's like, yeah, you should just tell him that. And at least it gives him a starting place. But I would tell that person not even to yeah. start a podcast to start. Um, and I agree with that. One caveat, though, is that, you know, one of the best things you can do for figuring out your market or product market fit mm -hmm. is to have great conversations with prospective buyers, with other smart people in your industry. And so that's a big difference between like, I might get a job with a company versus I might start totally. a company, completely different. But if you have more of a focus and a direction, I'm gonna start a company, but I just, I'm not exactly sure who's our right client avatar, yeah. which is so common, so frequently common, you know, the case. Um, actually taking you know the time to have conversations yeah. with um existing clients past clients um your champions the people who love you others in your industry the thought leaders the speakers the authors in your industry one of the best ways to figure out who your avatar is who you should be going after some of the biggest insights we've had has been from that i totally um, agree with you on that and to think about and dip your toe and explore different avatars in this situation there was no business. And my fear was it's, if it doesn't create revenue or money, people quit doing it. And so he, in this situation, had no business. So uh, right. my fear was he's going to quit after a very short period of time if it doesn't result in business. If you don't have a business or services, then you don't. But yeah, if you're going to explore different topics or, or avatars, yes, totally. The other one that we talk about a lot is um following up in getting more guest recommendations you know if we think of kind of gold medalist as a standard for podcasting people are um we are and we tell our clients to to get ask for guest recommendations ask for introductions of more of more great guests from your net from their network and your network yeah and you know it's funny people ask sometimes should i use the podcast to get referrals well yeah absolutely yes you absolutely should it'll work a hundred times better than you know uh hey guys uh reaching out to your your clients and saying hey hey clients um you know next month is looking a little light do you mind uh introducing me to some people that you know like maybe some others that i could talk to about my service because i you know we do a great job and i'd love to tell them about that I mean, that's not gonna work right you know, whereas leading with, um, you know, here's the type of person I'd love to be connected with. We're, we're featuring these people on a podcast. Um, who should we feature? Who would, you, who would you recommend? And oftentimes people would be really helpful with that. And of course, this comes again with the presumption that you're not going to try and immediately sell someone, that you're going to build a relationship first. You're going to deliver value to, to that person. You're going to give them exposure and thought leadership using your podcast and in many cases that will lead to other things N nothing ever works 100 percent of the time but in many cases it will uh what are some other qualities of gold medalists and then we'll get into um the qualities of people who don't yeah. land on the metal stand yeah i mean the other thing is just focusing it goes deeper on focusing on that relationship but what else can you do to deepen that relationship and help that person not just before the interview, not on even on the interview. Obviously, you're going to promote it across the channels, but but after, now, how do you deepen the relationship? So, what else could you be doing for that person? Right? Could you be making introductions to that person? Could you offer that episode as a resource because that you know they talk about their skill set? What else can you do to help that person? Just think it in their shoes. Like when you have someone on, what are they looking for? Right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and oftentimes they're looking to get exposure for their their company, for their business, for something new that they're launching. I interviewed someone earlier today who um, has a book that he hasn't finished yet, but he's going to be launching it. He's going to want to get promotion around it. Um, even just the opportunity to talk through the ideas that are going into that book can be helpful for an author as they get better at talking about these things. That can be really helpful. I've right, had so many let's... people, John, you know, I've had on my podcast and they've gotten clients from being on the podcast because, yeah. and it's and maybe someone who listened to the podcast for me, I, I mean, numerous people, but it's also something they can use. They can go, hey, like watch me talk about yeah. what I do. And they've gotten clients using that same yeah. asset. And one thing you are really good at is following up then, making an introduction later and sharing that link to that live episode to that person that you're introducing them to. So imagine this scenario, you're a guest on someone else's podcast. A month or so later, your episode has gone live and they introduce you to someone who's a prospective client of theirs and they link to that episode. You know, you look so great in that scenario. You know, that person is going to be, you know, love you. And if you do that for someone who's already your champion, they're going to love you even more. So let's talk about um, the other end of the spectrum. So, you know, there's a gold medalist and then there's everyone else who doesn't land on the medal stand. So they've worked really hard. They've trained really hard uh, and they haven't gotten anything to show for it. And, and, you know, what we like to say is that a lot of times what happens is they focus on the minutia and there's limited time and energy that you have to put into this. It's a very finite window, just like the Olympics to succeed. And focusing on the minutia, you know, what color is my jersey, you know, things like that that don't matter as much when it comes to athletics is, you know, there's a carryover to the world of podcasting. And so what are some of those different examples of minutia, Jeremy? I mean, people spending too much time on, you know, like, for instance, people will spend hours and hours and hours figuring out what is the right software I should use for recording. Okay. Just don't overthink things too much. There's already something you use, so use it. Like, is one of their software going to be better than Zoom or, you know, the quality is good. I mean, we use, uh, you know, Zoom for interviews. Now, people are like, we have Zoom, but I'm not sure if the video quality. Great. Okay. When you have like millions of subscribers or whatever, like then go off and spend three hours doing research. Um, so just don't overthink it. If you already use a company, use something, just use it. Second is, you know, again, on the technical aspects, people will spend hours and hours researching mics and equipment and technology setup. Again, we're talking about a B2B podcast. If you are NPR, great. Like that's your business. You can research all you want and get thousand dollar mics. There's very, um, there's amazing easing solutions, affordable solutions. Like we use, uh, I use a Blue Yeti, John using an HR2100. Just don't overthink those, those things. Just get it started. Right. Now, another one um, is, another example is uh, people who they spend personally hours and hours, too much time on the podcast or their team spends too much time. And oftentimes for the team, it means they're torn between client work or internal initiatives or internal marketing work like the podcast, yeah. which leads to frustration for the So when team. you say on the podcast, you mean like trying to it could like be scour over the audio or frequently what? Frequently that's the case, right. It could be the post-production. Um, you know, I've talked to people that have $5 million businesses and they're editing video themselves. You know, and, the, and they'll say to you, you know, I'll say, what's the big goal of your business? Well, I want to go to 5 million to 10 million. Well, then why are you spending time editing video yourself? You know, or why are you spending an additional 90 minutes or two hours after the interview's over, combing over and reading through the content yourself? You know, you shouldn't be spending your time on that versus getting an introduction from a guest that you had on to someone else, following up with that person having a conversation with that person about being a guest on the podcast, that one relationship could be tremendously valuable to you. So you get, you're stealing your own time and energy and attention away from what you should be doing, spending time on stuff, which is, which is minutia. And I would put it in that category, also spending a lot of time fixating on the audio quality. You know, that includes cutting out ums and ahs. And, you know, and, and we don't say this because we believe in, in fear of quality sound. We say this because we know 
we've seen this many times before. We've seen people that focus their time and attention on the wrong things, and it steals time and attention away from the things that they should be focusing on. Yeah. And on that front, you you still want to keep the authenticity of the, the conversation and you know, making it too polished. People sometimes see through that. And also it doesn't allow you to it doesn't force you to get better necessarily as an interviewer if you do like I say certain things and it forces me because I'm not telling the audio or audio person, cut this out, cut that out. I keep it in there. So I've had people criticize me on YouTube and say, you're doing this. And if I cut that out, I wouldn't get better and wouldn't realize that. Right. Yeah. And, and it becomes kind of a crutch. If you know that someone's going to clean it up for you afterwards, then it, it allows you to depend on that rather than, and I'm choosing my words really carefully right now, you can tell, rather than trying to get better naturally, which is a skill which is incredibly important if you want to be a speaker, if you want to speak on stage, if you want to be on other podcasts, you have to get better at that. You have to learn to improve your language. And it definitely will over time. I mean, podcasting has definitely made me a better speaker. Um, 100%. Uh, yeah, another, you know, some other uh, qualities that people focus on who don't land on the medal stand versus gold medalist, focusing too much time on, on the written content or the production end of things rather than making sure they're using the right strategy, rather than using it as an outreach tool, rather than having great conversations. Um, and then also, of course, this goes without saying, but people who try and manipulate and use a podcast in a salesy way, trying to, in a manipulative way, um, get trick, trick, trick prospective customers into what effectively becomes a sales conversation. Uh, now, I'm all for people who use a podcast, connect with people who might be a prospective client, have a great conversation, and at some point transact business together. But we all know the difference between someone who's just trying to trick you into a sales conversation and those who are doing it in order to deliver value. Don't be those types of person yeah. who's just trying to trick you into a sales conversation. I mean, if your thought should be, how do I add as much value as humanly possible to this person? That's the mindset that we go in with. Thank you all for being here and go check us out. Smart Business Revolution, Inspired Insider is Jeremy's podcast. It was a pleasure talking about this and we will talk again soon. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, nice like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.